Hi, I'm Adam from TSN. And Sheree from TSN. Now, this is not an Adam Sheree normal sort of video. This is no. this is Sheree's testimonial as far as Sheree's journey to date. And I got Sheree to do a bit of a write up as far as what she's experienced to date, and you know, before we met and started working together, and you know, where she's got got to today. It's been a phenomenal journey so Thank far, you. and uh, I think. Now, a lot of you men and women can relate to Cherie's story, which we're going to sort of peel back with a few things. So, what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to go right, right the way back. I mean, this has just been a, an incredible journey as far as since I've known you. Yeah. And the, the best thing about this testimonial is it it's action packed with all the things you shouldn't do, and then all the things you should do, and sort of. You know, you can do all the right things, but if they're not aligned and you're not consistent with the right things, it sort of, it makes that whole journey a hell of a lot harder. Yeah. Like you'll still get from A to B, but it takes a hell of a lot longer. Yeah. Then once you start aligning those things and you're consistent in the right areas, it's just, it's amazing. Like people think there's a magic pill, there's a magic diet that, you know, you just pull all those things together, you know, obviously a few factors taken into consideration, but it's amazing what, what the result is of that. Yeah. Now. Uh, with the with with that being said, and the 180 degree turnaround that's happened over this time is 26 this yeah. year, yeah. and all of 40 kilos. Now you got to got to understand. I actually had a laugh when we posted something up on social where people go, "What is she four foot tall?" And I went, <laughs> "Oh yeah, close too." So Cherie's not exactly vertically um, gifted, let's just say, but um, she's made use of that structure and that frame, and we're really looking forward to developing things further. Yeah. Uh, 26 today, 40 kegs, very healthy, great shape, yep. plenty of muscle we've stacked on her as well uh, since we first started. So take us back to when you mentioned this, this is probably the first thing about a relationship with food. Yep. And you were 12 years old, diagnosed with an eating disorder. So yes. like what, what, what come about of that and, and yeah, so just expand on that a little bit. Um, so yeah, when I was 12 years old, I got diagnosed with an eating disorder. I probably didn't get diagnosed till, I think I was suffering for probably a year and a half before I even got diagnosed. Um, really, I don't even know why I guess it started or how it started, but I've always had a bad relationship with food. I never wanted to eat because it would always make, like in my head, make me fat. I would weigh myself every day on the dot, like if I was over a certain kilo that I had set in my head, I just wouldn't eat that day. And it's weird because knowing now how much scale weight fluctuates, it just makes no sense. Like, cause I would be gaining weight because my body would be holding so much fluid. So yeah, so my doctor wanted me to keep a food diary and everything like that. I just wouldn't do it. I never wanted to talk about it. This is probably the first time I've actually spoken about it out loud. Yeah, wow. Um, wow. So, yeah. but yeah, it changed me a lot and I think I've learned a lot from it too. Mm. And I think like me talking about it, if that helps one person out there, then I'm good. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, I, I suppose like expanding on that a little bit further, like women and even young kids this day and age, I think they're even getting younger that have, have got eating disorders and things like that, all, all due to the fact of what's portrayed in social. And we all know that a lot of that stuff that's out there, that people are using old images and basically portraying this other identity of yeah. perfection. And, uh, you know, obviously now that we're so interconnected but we're so disconnected uh, it, it makes it a lot harder for people who are trying to get healthy or they're self-conscious or anything like that yeah, so I would have hated to be like who I was then in this day and age because mm. even though I'm not old social media wasn't massive no, but no if I was staring at Instagram girls all day I would have been ten times worse yeah. than what I was yeah, yeah. and um, the other thing too like which you actually didn't put in your write up was what was the catalyst for you getting into training and, and going to the gym and that sort of thing? Was that just because you always you know were conscious of your weight and being fit? What what sort of got you down that side as far as joining the gym or doing something like that? Yeah, I think it was always meant to find me, I think. Like both my parents trained ridiculously, they actually met at a gym. 
No, um, no. But definitely, I think it was my mental state of I needed to be thin. Like, if I wanted to eat, I needed to train because then that mm. was how I would. Well, be I, able I, to I eat. only train to eat these days. <laughs> yeah, right? My relationship with food is so different now, but mm. I was 17 when I stepped into a gym. Yep, for so the 17. First time. So I, I think. Like summarizing that as well is that it like knowledge is power, yeah. and you don't know what you don't know. And unfortunately, like even now, I'm getting people that are you know ready to throw the towel in because they think that it's it's their metabolism or that you know. And, and unfortunately, it's just lack of education. Yeah, absolutely. In this yeah. day and age, we've got so much access to information, but where do you start? Yeah. You know, it's just so many conflicting opinions and everyone is individual to their own right. So now that, that's, a, that's a really good sort of um, understanding initially sort of how things, so, so from 17, then let's, let's go all the way through to, now Sheree competed in 2018 yes. in the ICN rookie titles, yes. which no doubt was an incredible experience. Amazing, but amazing. Would you say that you did that for, like what was the reasoning for you wanting to do that? Um, I think it was mainly just a mini goal to set myself. Like I'm very strong willed and I'm very like strong headed. Um, so I don't know, I wasn't afraid to step on stage and be judged. Yeah. Um, because, and I knew a lot of people that were doing it too. So I think peer pressure also made me want to do it, but I'm glad I did it because it's definitely something I would do again. Absolutely. But my relationship with food then still wasn't as good as it is now. Mm. So. Yeah. yeah, and and uh, that whole I think the whole experience of competing I mean that's just taking your body to another level again. Yeah, and you know the best thing now is you've got so many amazing coaches that specialise in that side of things too. But uh, let let's say okay, competed, enjoyed the journey. Now you were in living in Victoria, and post show you now this is this is something as well that I've also personally experienced as far as everything's geared to training for purpose or with a purpose and then that purpose finishes yeah. and you're just sort of in limbo and not only that is obviously the the structure the routine and all the little things that got you there start to sort of crumble yeah. and this is where I, I think when you you actually relocated to Queensland yes. and this is sort of where there was a year of just I don't know okay. yeah pretty much so let's so yeah. When I moved, I guess when you move into state, you need to find everything new. So like a new gym, new coach, I don't know, new shopping center, like everything, everything is new and it gets, and I didn't think it would be as overwhelming as it actually was, but I pretty much just threw in the towel with that sort of aspect. I would probably train once, twice a week. So I still had a gym membership, um, but I wouldn't train and I would just eat whatever I wanted. So, and I didn't track it, did it nothing, like for about a year, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, sort of, it's fun, sometimes you just need that time away to sort of really get a lot more appreciation, like people are through COVID, a lot more appreciation for what they've got and how much they enjoy that journey in health and fitness as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. so. And if you've seen my before photo, that is a year of not caring yeah. what I was eating or, but mind you, a lot of it's a lot of girls will watch that and go, "That's what I want to look like." Sort of <laughs> yeah. thing. So you know, Sheree by no means was, you know, out of shape or anything like that. But um, there's a huge difference from then to yeah. now, massive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So this this then, uh, Adzi, you've got to thank for this. Is he? Yeah. So he basically, uh, I think he sent me a message. Yeah. Saying he had a, he had a maid, and uh, and then that's where connection as far as Sheree and I first met and this was sort of when I was starting to really heavily get involved with coaching again and lots of things happening in, in, in a great way but that's when Sheree and I met was it January 2019 yeah and you know you got to think that Sheree was going from a year of just yeah no accountability inconsistency and used to a pattern so it's very hard with a click of a finger to sort of try and turn those uh, those habits around very quickly. Yeah. And you know, some people they'll get in and things will change quick as far as the way they adopt the, the approaches. Some just take a little bit more time. And Sheree definitely was one of those. 
people. But uh, we introduced Sheree to the art of flexible dieting, aka structured flexibility. I hate even calling it flexible dieting anymore. And obviously, uh, programming, structure, accountability, check ins, and that sort of thing. So, explain that that process. You know, going from a year of of nothing to to then being exposed to that sort of thing. It's it's hard to create a habit, so I guess it was mainly creating the habit, but I don't feel that I was ever fully committed. I think my head definitely got in the way a lot, but your mind doesn't like change. Um, so if you fall trap into that, you'll never get the results that you wanted. Um, so it took some time, a lot of time, but we got there, we got there. But, you know, I'm not perfect, I'm still not perfect now, um, but I'm a lot better than where I was Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, I think, um, I mean, you said around that time too, you still had a bit going on externally. I mean, I suppose it was for your sanity purposes, a bit of training and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, I'll speak for Sheree on this part. Like, she was great for a couple of weeks there with the food, but the training was off. And then she was good with the training and the food was off. And it was always just, I go, Sheree, you just gotta, you gotta get those two in line. And when they do, I said it over and over and over again. She's like, I oh, know, I know, I know, and I, I don't know. I just had this feeling that eventually it'll all click. Yeah. Um, and let's let's face it, the you know uh, setting a goal again and training with a purpose was probably the best thing out because Sheree would, would have been gone overseas what two weeks ago? Today. Today? Just today. Okay. Well, we won't we won't remind you. <laughs> that so pre-COVID, Sheree had a five-week trip overseas planned. Yep. And I thought, okay, well, what's sort of going to give things a little bit more purpose in the short term for Sheree? And the whole idea was to get her ready early, just like do if, they, if someone's training for you know anything, get them ready early and then just pull her out of the, the, the red zone or the danger zone where weight regain could potentially be an issue and um, get her food up nicely so that if she goes away on holidays, she's one, not on poverty macros, which that's a perfect case for weight regain. And uh, she can have a bit of freedom and flexibility overseas, but looking good and feeling, which was important. Yeah. Uh, little did we know that there would be a global pandemic thrown in there and it, basically the whole world shut down. But that didn't stop you. No, so I still wanted to do it. I think the minute I sort of started seeing results was when it sort of pushed me harder and more driven. And I believe everything happens for a reason. So I'm, as much as I'm upset that I'm not going away, there's no point being upset about it because it's not going to change anything. So there's no point me not training or not eating what I want to eat. I may as well go for my end goal, which is, is to, to compete again. I may as well just focus on that. Yeah, yeah. So one, Inconsistency to consistency is a game changer. It's the, yeah. it's the foundational component to any successful health and fitness program. Yeah. You know, people always ask me, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? What do you think of this? I go, as long as, can you stick to it? <laughs> can you stick to the perfect example yesterday? Mm -hmm. But um, and that's the thing, like, is in, it's, the ultimate thing is, is sustainability and adherence. It, it, it trumps everything. Yeah. And, you know, people are just too, impatient to get from A to B. And not only that, you've got to also think is if something's very drastic as far as the changes and the results and the, and the measures you take to get there, more often than not, there's going to be an even, an even more drastic rebound. Yeah. And that's where, you know, statistics proof, and I'm not going to say that the, 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 what everyone says about 95% of diets fail. We are successful in getting to where we want to go, whether it be especially with weight loss. We're, we're good at ripping the body fat off or the weight off. But keeping it off, that's, that's, that's where the problem is. We're not good at keeping it off. And then that, and that's where the, the definite problem is. And now, now Sheree that we dieted Sheree properly for the first time, and Sheree was actually in a really good like metabolic uh, position um, on high food, no cardio. Like it was, a, it was a perfect position to start dieting and using our tools as weapons as we need it, being calorie drops, exercise increase. Uh, through the journey now from when we started working together, yeah. and how much knowledge you've gained over this time, like how's that affected you as far as giving things a bit of credibility as far as why you're 
going through a certain phase and now with Cherie our goal is to you know stack on, on some more slabs of meat and uh, get it jacked. <laughs> With that knowledge that you've now got behind you from everything that you've learned through the mentoring program yeah. and, every, and everything under this roof, how much has that helped you sort of stick on plan or just when the ship goes off course a bit or reading data? Because now, obviously, we communicate a lot, uh, not only Sheree and I, but with our clients on using multiple sources of data, whether it be feedback, uh, which is extremely important, photos, measurements, um, you know, DEXA scans to, to, to weight, which is yeah. only one component. What, like, how, how is it now different from, you know, from you, at tw the 12 year old girl, to 17 training, to jumping on stage before, to, to what you've learned in this sort of year and a half? I, I can't put into words, I guess, the amount of knowledge that I know now. Um, yeah, but data is a huge thing and Obviously your mindset, so if I understand why I have to do something, I'm pretty good at under, understanding and actually doing it. Um, but honestly, I was really nervous to sort of weigh myself once a week and I was nervous to have to measure myself consistently because obviously with my old coach, he would do that all for me. So that element of me freaking out was never there. But with Adam, like I've never, from day one, I've never had a freak out over it. I can't believe the amount of knowledge that I know mm. now. And I sort of understand more that food is fuel and what I put into my body affects my training. It also affects your mindset too. Yeah. So something as little as changing what you eat change is like a whole world of difference with your training and your mindset as well. Yeah, yeah, some great, great advice there. And it's, you know, as a coach, it's just been so good to see the maturity that you've developed with your whole health and fitness approach. It's it's amazing, like, you know, there's been multiple occasions through the back end where Cherie's like, I'm done. <laughs> but she just, it, it's like, I always, I love this, you know, do the things that need to be done even when you don't feel like doing them. And that's the approach you adopted there. But yeah. you knew it was gonna come. You knew, like, we communicated what was going on there. And not only that is that, as a coach, you've got to also look at times when you get the red flags. Yep. And Cherie told me, there was one time in particular, I remember we were just having a chat and she walked in to train. And Cherie's normally really, you know, really into her training and enjoying it. And she, she was telling me that her enjoyment for training was down a bit and, and a few other factors. And that was sort of a red flag for me to then actually make a call just before, just off our our premium goal, but I knew what was obviously going to be happening as a result of kickstarting the metabolism and getting more fuel or food back into Sheree. And lo and behold, we hit our goal. Yes, yes. and uh, and we're not done yet. You know, we're we're just scratching the surface now. But I think Sheree's got that taste for okay. If I pull my finger out now and put all these tools together while I'm building my metabolism and putting more food into my body. It's going to give Sheree the best chance to then change body composition because you can't do that with a diet. No. You're just revealing what you work so hard for. Yeah. Um, there's a quote that you wrote down. So tell yes. me a bit about that. So I've got two that sort of keep me going every day. The first one is to get out of your own way. When I What I mean by that is when you don't feel like training and your head is telling you, no, it's fine, just do it tomorrow. Just ignore it and just go and do what you have to do. Because if you keep having that mindset, tomorrow will never come. And then before you know it, you haven't trained for a week, you haven't eaten properly for a week. Yep. Week turns into months and then it turns into years. You start all over again. Then you're starting all over again and it's honest, it gets frustrating. I've done it, it gets so frustrating. If I was consistent from the moment I stepped on stage to now, my body would be a completely different composition again to what it is now. I 100% I agree with that, but also I, I think that go through what you did yeah. to have even more appreciation. Because everyone goes, oh, what you, if I did this, if I did this, this, you need to go through those experiences to have the true appreciation of what you've got now. Yeah. You could always say coulda, woulda, shoulda. Yeah. But um, but yeah, I reckon that's great advice, Sheree. Well, well, yeah, really, yeah, really well said. And the other one? Remember your why. So why are you training? Why do you want to eat better? Why do you want to change your lifestyle? So on days where you are feeling flat, unmotivated, 
don't want to do anything, you need to remember why you're doing it. Yeah. And make sure they're like positive whys, not yeah. negative whys, <laughs> obviously. Definitely. I think another thing like um, expanding on that is that I, uh, I always tell people with their macro goal or whatever, what does, what does you with that goal, how do you think? And you know, the same thing as far as, you know, let's say it was a X amount of kilo mentality as far as what that person is, and it was 20 kilos away, and they felt like skipping gym. I said, would, that, would your 20 kilo less self be skipping gym just because you're tired? Yeah. And that's, that's another thing. And not only that is the imagery of, you know, taking a photo of the scale weight and sending it to me, how would you feel? And just, just visualize those emotions and, and things like that that really sort of get you through those tough times yeah, as well. Absolutely. But exactly as Sheree said, remember your why, why you're doing it and, um, and, and po positive ones positive as well. Positive words, yeah. Um, like, yeah. Yeah, when I was dieting, there was heaps of times where I had to remember my why. Like, as Adam said, I came to him and I was like, I'm just training because I need to, mm -hmm. not because I want to. I think one day I was like, I just want to eat bread. <laughs> oh, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> Lucky you got a good metabolism <laughs> for it. No crumpets though. No crumpets. <laughs> oh, that's another story in itself. <laughs> okay, so with such a wonderful journey, no doubt we'll sort of touch on things more and thank you so much for just sharing. No, that's that. okay. It's been, you know, I think you're going to be able to help, you know, much more than one other lady out there as far yeah. as that side. But um, is what advice, if there's a woman out there who's either going through an eating disorder or really just uncomfortable in the body that they're in or wants to get started in a, in a journey of their own, yeah. what advice would you give to them? With the whole eating disorder thing, get help. Like, I, 100%, that is one thing that I regret not doing. Um, and whether it be talking to someone about it or, you know, just going to see a doctor, like you, you're not alone in this sort of aspect. But if anyone that wants to change their lifestyle and make their lifestyle a little bit more fit and healthy, just start. Like, day one or one day. Mm. Like, that's yep. the decision that you guys have to make. Very, as yeah. Well. No next but week. You, yeah. No, yeah. No, no, no. But you won't, you won't regret it. Yeah. You won't regret it. Get yourself a good coach who you can honestly, Adam's probably the first coach I've had that I can honestly say that I can talk to about everything. And I think that's also why it's helped me so much and I'm such a stronger person mm. mentally as well as physically. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, de definitely. And that's the other thing too that I've learned not to be such a incredible hard ass when people go off track. I used to be, I, I, you, I was just, that's black, that's white, that's it, there's no grey. And unfortunately, you know, people, different people have got different ways of learning, different mindsets, and you've got to sort of know how to package things for, for particular scenarios. And, you know, with Cherie, she felt comfortable with, no matter, you know, whether it was just stress in life or whatever it may be, to communicate that with me because it's a team effort. You know, we're there to work with each other, not against each other. And, and the, I suppose the best thing for Cherie is she's known through this whole journey, she's not alone. Yeah. And, um, and just the accountability side, I think, was a, was a big one. Because just as quick as you can get there, it can go off track just as quick. Yeah. And, um, and that's where, you know, we even had the conversation this morning, is that the little things that got you there, you've got to make sure that you still implement those even when the bar's changed, because they can crumble and, and the ship can go off course very quickly. Yeah, so, definitely, yeah. All good. So there we go, guys. That, oh, well, we got to talk about the transformation. So Sheree, Sheree's like 10 or 11 centimeters in her waist less all the time now. Um, the food's coming back up. You know, we easily get over the 2000s, you know, for a 40 kilo frame. She's got an incredibly good metabolism as well. But this time around, obviously, when we start uh, being in the metabolic building phase and the, uh, you know, the just the, the quality muscle building phase is that Sheree's got more purpose now because through the reveal, AKA the dieting phase is where you get to reveal all the hard work you've done in the building phase. Yeah. Uh, but now obviously we're gonna make sure that, you know, it's not just stacking on weight for the sake of it. We're just gonna really uh, try and dial in the physique while we're you know, continually putting the cows in and um, lifting heavy things, which is gonna be fun. But uh, you know, I think the, the biggest thing that comes from this is the amount of education Cherie's got now so that if anyone around in Cherie's circles asks her a question, she can answer it with confidence. 
and, uh, and not only that, is that I couldn't be more proud of what we do under this roof and that up there, the, the, the TSM logo and what's on her chest is a, an amazing representation of it and I'm extremely proud. So hope you guys enjoyed and uh, let's inspire many others out there to do the same. Thanks for listening. Thank you. Bye. Now guys, if you've got any questions, we would love to hear from you. And more importantly, don't forget to follow us on all social media platforms for great content. So follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and subscribe to our channel.